Hi, I'm Kurt. Welcome to the Studio 22 Album Maker tutorial. A uh, small overview we're going to start with. The menu bar on the top left, we're going to work our way up. Effects, Masks, Frames and Clip Art. We'll then carry across the top bar from the left to the right and may jump around. And on the bottom right hand corner, the additional menus and options. To select your product, click on New. The menu bar on the left shows the album types. By clicking on them, there will be an image on the right. A short description as well as price will appear in the middle. For more information you're welcome to visit the Coffee Table Books website at www.coffeetablebooks.co.za We're going to start with the cappuccino, it's our most popular product and we'll type in there demo. On the left hand side you'd select from your folder where you have all your images. The middle pane, you click on the image, you can select one image at a time Alternatively, you can hold in control and select multiple images. You also have an option to select all and copy them all across. You'll notice you have four options on the left. Sample album design, album I designed, and two options of page design. Sample albums are those which have been supplied by us or the software developer. Album I designed would be templates, so for every product that you, you create, there will be an template left for future use. Page designs allow you to use the same design for multiple pages. If you're going to do a 30 page book you'll click on it, it'll be the same design for all 30 pages. The difference between the two is adjust pictures to design. If you have a square image and you fit it into a rectangle, adjusting to design your image will be a rectangle, it'll crop off parts of it. The other option, if you have a square image and you drop it into show a whole picture, you will see a square on that particular page. We've set the default function for autofill into no. You'll notice that the product's standard number of pages, or desired pages in this case, will be indicated. In this particular product, the Cappuccino A4 is a 30 page product. You can add the additional pages immediately if you like, or you can do it at any stage while you're busy with your design. We're going to just use a two page layout. The default setting for color background is also white. You'll have an option to change that anytime while working on the product. The software resizes your files and places it into an additional folder. This allows it to work very quickly when you're working on a 100 page book with roughly 400 images. It can breeze through them relatively easily because it's not using high res files. Once it's complete, it processes the book for you and all your files are copied and resized at exactly photographic resolution of 300 dpi, the size that you've selected, and placed into a folder which is then submitted to us. That way it optimizes the file size without losing any image quality. If the image appears of a slightly low re resolution on your screen, that's purely the thumbnails used to speed up the process. The final product will be full high resolution images. Starting with the cover, we can drag and drop an image over into the block. If you'd like to enlarge the image to cover the entire cover, you just drag from one of the blue corners and you overlap the safe area. The safe area is an uh, indication of what the cover looks like from a front view, so you do need to overlap part of the image so it wraps around the thickness of the cover. That would be an ideal area that needs to be covered for a standard cover. The black mark on the left indicates the the style of the cappuccino cover, so that would be the left side of your front page. Moving on to page one, we'll begin on the left hand side with backgrounds. As I mentioned, white is the default. You have a selection of standard colors. You also have a drop down menu. Everything with a 22 is products and items that have been added by Studio 22. We're going to choose weddings, and you just drag and drop your background onto the image scroll down and you find the one that works for you that's pretty much the process is to find the one that works best we're going to stay with weddings we're going to use this green one it's also possible to use an image in the background by dragging it and just touching it on the edge and that becomes your background image if you now right click you get an access to the opacity so you can fade the image out. You don't want it to compete too much with the images on the page. It's also possible to set a color with your 
opacity so we're going to go back to opacity and we're going to choose black as a color so now as the image fades it fades to black so we'll fade it completely it's black and now we can bring it back the other way and part of the image will show in the background to remove that we right click and set color then we'll go back to white and remove the effects and we'll put that other backdrop back moving up to effects effects allow you if you're not already working in Photoshop and you've done all your effects and your manipulation it allows a small amount of changes uh, vintage for example will tone down all the colors it gives it a vintage faded kind of look sepia is your classic brown tone sepia the one from studio 22 the developers also added one they're called sepia there's also red purple we've also added a punch up and a knock down punch up would just punch the colors up a little bit and knock down just tones them down if it's a little bit too high other advantages of your effects is you can use them on the background so if the color wasn't suitable for what you needed it you simply drop your effects over that moving up to masks masks are basically explained as if the area is black your image will show wherever the white is it'll be transparent so we're going to drop a portrait format mask over the image and zoom in and we'll try another one so you can see the differences the main idea of the mask is not to detract from the image uh, but to enhance the image to show it off at its best image is always the most important that's pretty much the selection further down you'll notice uh, many other options uh, work, some of them work very well with collages it's a case of going through and experimenting until you find the one that works best I'm going to zoom back out again next above is frames frames very much like a frame on the wall it has a, a border around it as it would be hanging on the wall we're going to scroll down to use the portrait one which fits the format of the image if you use the landscape format it'll distort along the sides so it's recommended to use the format of the photograph so that's frame you'll also notice now possibly in the top left hand corner that the mask and the frame are working together that's something you'd need to check to see some styles can work or not in this case we're going to remove the mask you'll also notice we can remove the effect at the same time just to see the visual look of how the frame looks we're going to set the background color to black by going right click and then choosing set color and we'll drop another one over the other image you'll further down you'll see in a frame with black you can see what that would look like and then we're going to set it back to white the next option is clip arts there's quite a selection again with a drop down menu um, these are the ones added by Studio 22, so we're going to stay on that block and pick one that we're going to use. We'll use that one. Simply drag and drop onto the page. Although you can't distort a photograph if you click on it, it crops or it changes, it enlarges the image. With a clip art, if you click on it and you hold shift, it enlarges proportionally. If you don't hold shift, it changes the shape. In this case we're just going to do an overlap across the page. If you right click it allows you to go into special effects and opacity and again you can set the opacity of the clip art. It also allows you to adjust a color so if you want to adjust uh, to say green so as it fades it fades in and picks up a green cast you can see a slight green casted over there you can also control layers so if I would like to lift the photograph above the layer of the clip art we right click to order bring to front so now this image is on top above that and the clip art leads over our Eiffel Tower image on the right we're just going to delete the clip art and we're going to return both of these photographs by removing the frame by right clicking remove the frame then moving up to page and cover layout there are a number of templates available one of the key elements of the software is the ability to create any layout you like and to save it as a template for later use we will cover that shortly
we need only drag and drop your template over the image and the option you choose it will change to that particular layout before we cover the menu along the top we're just going to show you how to create your own layout and save that so we're going to go to page 2 and we're going to delete the two existing items okay starting with a blank page we're going to drop three images in and uh, line them up and we'll start out by enlarging one of the images you'll notice it's got the blue corners hold in shift and we enlarge proportionally you'll also notice that the sizes if you want specifics the centimeter sizes are listed in the little block by holding control and selecting the other two images it's clicking on them it highlights them with the white blocks I then right click make same size both and you'll notice all three are now the same size. We're just going to roughly pop them in position. Now I'm going to start with the image on the left again as my anchor image with the blue dots. Hold control and select the others. By right clicking over any of the images I now use align and select tops. So all the tops of the three images will now be aligned. The next option is spacing. I'd like to get the spacing even between the three images. This would apply no matter how many images are in a row. Starting with one image with the blue on the one end all the images that are selected will be aligned. Right click, spacing and make horizontally equal. So the, the spaces between each image will be equal. The next step is to get it in the center, so look at the space on the left over here and the space on the right over there as well as the top and the bottom. So all three images are selected, right click, center in page horizontally and center in page vertically. To go to frames, there's also an option to set a solid frame. Click and drag. Although the default setting is 0.5 centimeters in white, I've set it to one millimeter or one tenth of a centimeter in black. You simply click OK, drag it across, and you can hit Enter. It's also a lot quicker. And that's what we're going to do to our images. If we had to create an effect and make one of the images black and white, we could also take a mask and drag it over the center image. If we now want to save this as a permanent template we go to pages save as template. Clicking on that and we're able to go and view it under our cover page or page layout. So it is now successful. Click and go right to the bottom and we'll notice our image with the black and white in the center the two color images on the side is now part of our template selection. Well, that's it for part one of our tutorial. I'll take a bit of a break and we can move on to part two. Thank you.